Hi, and welcome to Hal Leonard's virtual NAM booth for Believe in Music Week. I'm Jeff Stradel, Jeff Executive, Stradle, Vice President Executive Vice President of Hal Leonard. Of Hal We're excited to host a session today with Justin Sanderco, one of the most popular guitar teachers in the world. We're proud to publish the Justin Guitar Method and happy to announce a new Easy Guitar songbook coming soon by popular demand. With that, I'll send it across the Atlantic to Justin, live in the UK. Take it away. Hello, people of NAM. Hope this finds you safe and well in these unprecedented and pretty crazy times. Um, I'm pretty aware that there's going to be a range of people here today, so I don't mean to be talking down to anyone or up to anyone. I'm just going to try and give you an outline of some things uh, that might help you practice and make the best use of your time in this crazy uh, lockdown that we're all in. I guess one of the few positives that has come out of all of this is it's given the opportunity to a lot of people to have a go at playing guitar. Maybe people that longed to do it a long time ago and family and life and career and stuff got in the way and they're coming back to it again. Um, a lot of people thought they didn't have the time to practice and being in lockdown has probably sorted that. Although if you're like me, you're probably juggling some parenting and other things as well. Um, what I'm hoping to give you today is some tools and some ideas on things to work on. If you're a student, there are things that you can probably have a go at directly yourself. But if you're a teacher, there are also things that you might want to introduce to your students as well. And I want to start off a little bit by talking about something I think is really, really super helpful and important. It's to do with the online habits and it's to do with dealing with lockdown and your involvement with music. And that is a daily listening session. Now, when I grew up, music seemed to have a more value than it has today. Most, you know, it's a little bit throwaway. It's everywhere. It's free. You can listen to any track anywhere you want. And when I was growing up, there'd be like a new Dire Straits record coming out and there'd be a lot of promotion around it. You'd get really excited, you'd get it, and you'd let, listen to nothing else but that one record for a, a long time. And I think that kind of focused listening is something a lot of people miss now. You know, I, I found for myself, for a long time, I was hardly listening to music other than for work. And I was losing some of the connection and the enjoyment with, you know, with music. Around the same time as I realized that, I was getting heavily into just regular meditation, mindfulness meditation, and I discovered a thing called mindful running. The idea of this mindfulness is focusing, teaching your mind to focus very specifically on being present and on a particular thing. The idea with mindful running was that you really focus on your footsteps or your feeling of the feet on the ground. And I tried transporting that idea into music and doing what I call mindful listening. Now, it's not really a meditation, but the idea would be to spend 15 minutes, half an hour a day listening to music and nothing else but listening to music because we all get distracted. There's so much stuff going on in the world. If you can remove all of that and just get absolutely zoned in on some amazing music, you really find that a beneficial and therapeutic adventure. I think it's great for your musicianship because it feeds your musical imagination, a whole bunch of ideas, gives you food for thought. If you're new to guitar, it might introduce you to some new music that you're not familiar with, help you discover new stuff that you might want to play. If you're a more experienced musician, I think it can be helpful to refine the focus here and get really into things like you know, kick drum patterns or guitar strumming or guitar textures or the structures of songs or like looking for a particular thing to focus on within the song. Okay, so how much time you dedicate to that is obviously something that would be completely up to you. But I, I found for myself, it's a really fantastic meditation. And I felt my musical imagination has been richer for that because it is something that we all kind of forgot about, I think. Well, not almost certainly not everyone, but a lot of people. Um, it's a, a thing kind of related to that. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase this, I hope not badly, but the bass player Vic Wooten's got an amazing book uh, about music, which is not a technical handbook, but a little bit more about how music works. And the takeout that I got from that is that music is a woman. And when you worship her, she gives you stuff. And I really love that as an analogy for how we learn music, because you can spend a lot of time on things that maybe aren't the right things you, you you get back what you put in and if you put in a lot of time into music then she rewards you back with it and i i feel like that's a nice way to think of the reciprocal arrangement of, of what you get out as well 
So that would be my first thing. I think that if, if you, whether you're brand new to guitar or you're a really experienced musician, if you can find 15 minutes to half an hour every day, or most days, to spend some real quality time doing some mindful listening, I've got a feeling that is sure to help you uh, on your journey. Um, I should remember to point out as well, uh, we've got some questions going on here. Uh, if you've got things uh, that you'd like me to check out, I have got some things I'm planning to talk about, but I'm going to try and fit some questions in, especially if they're relevant to the uh, points that we're doing. My friend Amy is going to copy them into my chat uh, for me. So that was the first thing I thought I'd chat a bit about. Now, the second thing, which is, I think, again, it's important for all of us, but particularly for people that are new to guitar, and that is this idea of minimizing distractions. Now, most people, I guess, the first port of call if you're learning guitar is going on YouTube. Um, hopefully, you might find me fairly early on. But even if you're watching my lessons on YouTube, you're likely to be faced with a lot of clickbait and a lot of very appealing thumbnails and titles of videos. This kind of stuff has been developed by advertisers, and they know how to grab you. Top five things, things you didn't know about this, all of these, these kind of titling. Now, that's not to, to dismiss any of the people making that content. A lot of it is absolutely fantastic. I do use that kind of titling as well because it's so effective. It really works. It's the people who have done this have studied persuasion and marketing, and they've kind of, they've really mastered the art of that now. But because of that, I really feel like it's a good idea to practice away from YouTube or away from a computer altogether. Without wanting to hoop my own horn too much, I think it's one of the good things that you'll find if you study on my site is that you're not going to get all of that because there's a lesson and there's a lesson you should be on and I'm not filtering up other lessons that I, you know, try and grab your attention away. So I think this idea of trying to uh, be focused on what you're doing and not allowing yourself to get distracted, I think is going to be important. I'm a really big fan of um, this thing here. Some of you youngsters might not be familiar with them. Uh, they go with a thing like this. It's called paper. And you can write stuff on it. And then you don't have to be near a computer. And I really strongly recommend it for learning music. So the idea, if you're learning a song, if you're learning a, a pattern, writing it down on a piece of paper, having a little folder of your notes or whatever. And then when you're doing your practice, getting away from all of that tech, I think is a really, really good idea. You know, um, I use a, a metronome in my phone or used to, but I've gone back to using an old school TikTok metronome because I don't want it to be involved with all of that. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to have my phone sitting on my practice, my music stand when I'm practicing, ready to, for a text message to flick up and distract me again. So the more ways you can find to uh, remove any sort of distraction when you're practicing, I think that's a really, really, really solid thing to do. Um, okay, before I go into the next little thing that I was going to talk about. I want to take any questions on that. Um, so there's a couple of questions here. Amy, if you could copy the name of the person who did the question in there as well, that'd be fantastic. Uh, the first question uh, was about my app, if there's a way to get my app on a PC. Uh, the answer is not yet, uh, but we're working on it being able to be used with Google Chrome or Chromebooks. Uh, not sure when that's going to happen. We've got a really massive release of the app, uh, 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 update to the app. Uh, that is available in some countries. We're still ironing out a few little things, but it's um, uh, that'll be released soon, I hope. Um, the second question is here from Paul Davey, uh, which is about to create a Justin Guitar Forum, bringing together people at similar levels. Actually, that totally exists already. Uh, it's at the justinguitarcommunity.com. Uh, really, really supportive, lovely community of people. Uh, particularly active in this kind of sharing performances of stuff. So uh, if you're a beginner and you want to know how you're getting on, you can make an, un, you know, an unlisted video or a public video, I suppose, on YouTube, paste a link up on the community forum, and then people will give you feedback on what it is that you might want to get into. So I think that uh, the, uh, the community aspect is pretty solid on the site. If you've not been there before, it's justinguitarcommunity.com, um, all one word. And uh, yeah, definitely go and check it out. It is, they're, they're, I'm, I'm always in awe of how friendly and cool all of the, the gang is over there. I've uh, been around for 12 years or 13 years now, that forum. Okay, uh, no more questions on that straight away. So I want to talk a little bit now about the uh, maximizing your practice time. 
And the first thing that I think is hugely important, again, no matter what level uh, of guitar player you are, is to really think about your goals. Now, what happens for a lot of people is if you don't have a goal, you learn something, you might practice a few weeks or a month or whatever on it, and then you go, oh, I might try that. You try this for a little bit, and then you try a little bit of that, especially if you're, you know, you're on YouTube and you've seen this video, and you go, oh, I might try this two-handed tapping thing. Oh, I'm going to try this acoustic thing. You run around, you do all of these different things. And after a certain amount of time, you find yourself back in the same place that you were in, and you feel like you haven't gotten anywhere. Well, actually, the truth is you have traveled around and seen a bit of stuff, but it's easier to get the feeling that you're back in the same spot and it's like, well, I've done this, but I've not really done anything. So the idea of goal setting is not like a concrete thing that has to define your life. It should be fluid and changeable, and depending on how you feel about where you're going, you can change. But I think it's a really good idea to have a very specific goal in mind in terms of like three months or six months, maybe a whole year goal. Um, I do three, six and, and a year goal at the beginning of the year for myself. So uh, you might say, hey, I really want to get better at, at, at blues lead guitar. So you think, right, well, if that's my goal, what are the things that I need to be able to do that? OK, well, I need to be able to I need to get my technique. I need to learn what scales are used in blues and I need to uh, figure out uh, what scales, uh, scales and licks and, and songs that use this sort of stuff. And I need to get better imp improvising. So I need some backing tracks. Try and think about your journey as much as you want. Like you're packing your backpack before you go off on your adventure. Do a little bit of research, figure out what courses there are, what things that you, you might like, what teachers you relate to, what, you know, the ones that talk about stuff that you feel like, oh yeah, that makes me excited to do that. Because staying inside of this part, something we'll talk about a little bit later on, but having that, a, a, a direction, a goal that you want us to go in, I think is an incredibly powerful thing because it gives you a motivation when you want to practice. You go like, okay, I'm going to practice today. I'm going here. I'm on my goal. I'm, I'm walking this stretch today. And I'm going to learn these things. Now, if you're going along there and you're like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. It's, maybe it's not a, all it cracked up to be. I, I don't like all the string bending. I find it too diffy at this stage. I, I, I don't know do you can go somewhere else and you can think about, again, but you want to stop and you want to think, right, well, what is it that I really love doing about guitar? What is it that that really ignites my fire for practice? Because that's the biggest thing that we that we all have is failing enthusiasm. If we if we fall out of love with it or whatever, you need to keep. It's part of that motivational thing is thinking about where it is that you want to put your energy and, and trying to go there. So if you're doing your blues thing, you're like, I'm not really feeling that. You go, okay, acoustic guitar. I want to learn some acoustic finger style. I'm going to do some finger style stuff. You can change your mind. You can go there. Okay, so I'm going to stop. So what finger style do I want? What type of finger style? What's exactly what genre of it? Is it the country sort of stuff? Is it more like James Taylor? Is it, what, you know, who are the artists that I like? Okay, how can I learn that? What do I need to be able to do that? Where can I get those lessons? Where can I get that instruction? And then off you go, set off in a new direction. And if you do that, you're very much more likely to have a sense of direction and reach your goals. You're much more likely to get to a point where you've done something well. And I think that can be inspiring as well to go, well, I set out to do blues lead guitar and you know what? It's taken six months, but I can do a pretty decent blues solo. Now I could get up at a jam night and I'd be able to do that. And, you know, that's amazing. I feel really good about it. What do I want to do now? Do I want to keep going on this and push it and learn five patterns of the minor pentatonic or learn how to, you know, outline the chord changes or whatever it was? Or maybe I... Maybe you realize on the journey that you're lacking something else. On your blues lead thing, you go, ah, geez, my blues rhythm sucks. I need to, you know, I really need to work on those chords and learn how to lock into the pocket a bit better or whatever. You're going to, you'll find new things as you go along there. And I think that that can be, it's always when I used to do private lessons, the first lesson, the majority of the time was about refining that and really thinking about exactly what it is that you want to do. The more you can refine it, the more detail you can get into it, the more likely you are to stay on the journey and stick, you know, stay focused in your practice. So that's the first little part of that. In line with that, if you get to the point where you're not feeling it as much or you've fallen out of love with it and you're struggling to get back on to into the practicing thing or just playing even, um, a really great thing to remember is that the hardest part of practice is getting your bum on the seat. So what I would encourage you to do is to just say, right, I'm going to do five minutes practice a day. Five minutes is nothing, right? We can all spare five minutes. I feel like I'm a pretty busy guy, but I could definitely carve five minutes out of my day to do something. The great thing about guitar is that when you carve out five minutes, 
it's actually much more likely to turn into 25 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour or a couple of hours, as long as you're practicing things that you enjoy. Okay, so if you that's a, my biggest tip for feeling like you're in a rut or whatever is just trying to make yourself to do five minutes and do something you love. And that's what we're coming up to now. So you should always be trying to practice and play things that you enjoy doing. I really, I, I forced myself to practice a lot of stuff that I didn't enjoy. And if you want to be a professional musician like me, like a jack of all trades, master of none kind of a guitar player, then actually in some ways it's kind of important because you have to learn all of these different things and have a, a, a reasonable grasp on a lot of different styles and how they work and the harmony theory and all that sort of stuff. So I practiced stuff that I didn't. But I think for most people, most of the time, you're better off finding the stuff that really ignites your fire and putting your full energy into that. And I think that's um, one of the key things uh, for a real successful artist is that blind determination and focus on a particular thing. Go, right, I'm going here. You know, finding the things that they're great at and they really love and then just loading all of their energy into that. So I would definitely recommend, I'm going to talk a little bit in a second about uh, time scheduling, time boxing and how to write a, a practice schedule. But within that, you really want to remember that you've got to try and keep it fun. So let's merge into um, <laughs> the, the question here is from Vinay about time management. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about now, about a practice schedule. But what I want to point out is that I think what, what I do and what I would recommend that you do is you look at your the amount of time you've got available. Let's say you've got an hour a day to practice. You should be doing half an hour of proper timed, time boxed practice, which I'll talk about in a second. You know, scheduled things, things that you write down, things that you practice with a metronome, focused stuff. And the other half of the time should be absolutely just whatever you feel like. If you're a beginner, they could be songs that are far too hard for, for you, but that you really love. Just like whatever you like, things that really float your boat, that make you excited. Let's focus, that, that part is up to you, right? I can't really coach you on that because we're all different. The things that we're gonna love is gonna be different. It can change, you know, whatever. When it comes to the practice time, I would really recommend that you do a thing called time boxing. And time boxing is this idea of having very specific time frames where you really, really focus on one thing for a short period of time and you have a little break. Now, I don't time box for longer than five minutes, right? I know I can practice for longer than that, but if I'm doing specific exercises, I find that for five minutes, I can really put 100% of my energy and concentration into a particular thing and then stop. A little bit of it, I'm sure, uh, well, I'm not sure. Many of you have probably run a race before, like a, a long race marathon or whatever. Uh, I've run a couple, not very many. I find it a bit difficult and painful. But one thing I did know is even though I was absolutely exhausted every time by the time I saw the finish line, for that last little bit, I could dig a little bit of energy in there because I knew where the finish was. So I could really gum it. Now, when you're doing a five-minute practice session, the end is very clear. It's finite. So it's almost like your, your mind will enable you to give full energy now because it knows it's going to have a break at the end of that five minutes. Whereas if your mind doesn't know that, it'll never let you quite run at 100%. It'll always keep some back because it doesn't know how long you're going to be pushing it for. Yeah, so that's, I think that is not very scientific, but it's definitely how it seems to work for myself and lots of students have uh, said that they've felt that same sort of thing over the years. So five minute sessions. Now, if you're going to practice time blocking for an hour, so that would mean you'd be doing a two hour schedule or you do this one hour routine I'm going to talk about in two sessions, half an hour one day, half an hour the next day. There are four areas which I think are the really key things. And I'd recommend that you try and divide your practice up like this because what you don't want to do is just work on one thing. Like let's say you realize that your picking is not very good and you really need to work on your picking. If you practiced loads and loads on your picking, your picking might get really good, but the other things won't be running, catching up with that, right? It'd be like going to the gym and going, oh, my arms are a bit small, my, oh, my left arm's a bit small, and then going to the gym and just doing loads and loads of work and loads of bicep curls on the left arm and not doing anything else for the rest of your body. That'd be crazy. You'd end up being like, you know, this weird Popeye type character. So the idea of having this holistic practice routine, I think is really important. The four things that I would recommend that you start working on is technique, knowledge, ear training, 
and repertoire. Okay, technique. So if you're doing a one hour routine, technique would get three five minute slots, so 15 minutes. Technique is important. The physical ability to play the instrument is important. That you know, being able to pick faster, being able to fret well, being able to do string bends in tune, but in technical stuff, the physical part of playing guitar, the technique, making sure your fingers aren't flying off the strings, making chord changes if you're a beginner. Okay, so those things fi find three things that you need to work on, three exercises. And again, over on my website, you're going to find loads of that. If you go to the technique section, there's different, you know, picking exercises, Freddy exercises. Uh, uh, synchronicity exercises, rhythm exercises, whatever. But I'm not just trying to say that you should use my stuff. Like find exercises that you love from teachers that you relate to that you know believe can you uh, are going to help you. So technique is the one thing that a lot of people go too hard on. That they think that technique is the most important thing, but it isn't. Right? It's it's a one quarter of the whole thing. Right? So three technique exercises. Then you got knowledge three five-minute sessions on knowledge. Now, knowledge could be scale shapes, it could be chord shapes, it could be in theory, it could be studying chord progressions. There's there's a hell of a lot of stuff that could fit into knowledge. It could be licks. It, and it's very malleable, this. This whole, what I'm talking about should be fluid and liquid, and you should be able to change it however you like to fit your particular circumstance, okay? So having this, uh, even though I'm saying, oh, you should do this or you could do that, if, if you can manipulate it to fit the stuff that you want to do to fit your goals, doing things that make you happy, then that is the most important part. OK, if you're doing I'm just going to jump back one step because something I forgot to mention with the technique stuff in the little uh, a practice schedule. Uh, again, if you want to download a practice schedule, you can head over to the Just a Guitar site and go to the blank papers section where there is a printable uh, schedule, which have the, has the days of the week and little boxes to tick off. and a great thing to be doing if you're doing like scale practice or whatever, again, is to write in the uh, the speeds that you get to or how many chord changes you did and that kind of thing so you can monitor your progress because seeing yourself progress in a tangible and clear way it can also be inspiring and to help you stay motivated to stay on track here. So uh, find three knowledge things. So we've got three technique things, three knowledge things. Then we've got ear training. Now, ear training could be interval ear training, relative pitch sort of stuff, like technical ear training, but it could also be transcribing, okay? Now, transcribing, that process, any of you that have followed my stuff uh, for very long will know that I'm really big on transcribing. The idea of hearing a sound on a record, having that sound go in your musical imagination, then you find that sound on your instrument. The more you do that, the more you're building this relationship, hearing a sound, musical imagination, instrument. After a little while, you can cut out the the first sound, just hear a sound in your musical imagination and be able to express that sound out of the instrument. And I kind of feel like that's the point of the whole thing, right? That That's musical expression is finding a sound or a melody or whatever in your musical imagination somewhere in your brain and, and making that come out of the, the instrument. So I think it's a huge part of it and it's the most overlooked. For real beginners, like complete beginners, I don't really think it's something that they should focus on. They can if they're if you're inspired to do it. But I found in the past a lot of beginners feel like they're uh, it's the part that they don't enjoy. And and I, again, for beginners, you want to be finding stuff that you really enjoy. Everyone, but particularly beginners, you want to be finding uh, just things that you enjoy to work on. Now, ear training is the one thing where the little five minute time boxing isn't so effective. So I would recommend doing that either as a fifteen minute block or if you can maybe doing like one hour once a week on transcribing. Because generally with transcribing, it takes a bit longer, particularly when you're new to transcribing, you might find it a bit of a slog. Do remember with transcribing, again, there's a course on my website that'll really help you out there where I simplify it and give you some sort of hints using real world examples as well. But the first time, couple of times you do it, it is gonna be hard. You might spend 15 minutes and work out one chord in a song and be like, oh, I'm hopeless, I can't do this, I'm going to give up, the transcribing stuff for me. Everybody has that when they start, don't worry about it. The second time you do it, you'll probably get two chords out of your 15 minutes. Third time, maybe four chords, and it'll, it'll keep getting better and better. But you've got to stick with it. It's a very steep start, but after you get over the first bit, it flattens out, it just becomes lovely. And the idea of being able to learn songs on your own without having to use tabs or lessons or something is a really amazing thing. So that's uh, ear training. Then the last one of those, the big four was repertoire. Now, playing songs is the point. No one goes to the Albert Hall to see the world's greatest scale player, 
that's not it. They got to listen to music, to songs. So you got to have songs. I tend to divide the songs into like easy beginner barbecue play along songs. Because even for me, if I go to a party at a friend's place or whatever, it's, I'm much more likely to end up playing Beatles songs and having a sing song than I am playing some fancy thing that I could do because I mean, occasionally I might pull something, a party piece out. But more often than that, not in a musical party setting, you need to have songs that you can play along. So even the most experienced guitar players should have a repertoire of stuff like that. You should also have songs that you're working on for your own personal development that could be a little bit more complicated. Uh, and I do think that it's a good idea to have some solo pieces, pieces that sound good on their own, like that you could play uh, where you don't have to sing, particularly if you're not a singer. Uh, if you can sing, yeah, like I said, all of this is fluid. You should be manipulating this to fit your own uh, circumstances. There's one other area, just I'm gonna take some questions in a second. Um, the one other area that I think can be really useful, it's more a kind of intermediate slash advanced thing, will be improvising. Now, improvising, you could sneak into the, the, the uh, knowledge thing or it could be a technique thing. I think as you get a bit better, you need to spend a whole block, so an equal block on uh, improvising. Uh, that can be, again, broken down into five little sections you might have playing on a standard or play in a particular set of changes or... Uh, there's lots of different ways of approaching that, but and it depends on what genre you're interested in and how you want to approach that and whether you're playing licks or whether you're improvising with arpeggios, making the changes. There's a heap of different variables uh, within that. But I think this idea of uh, trying to figure out a routine, breaking it down into these little chunks and having these little five minute sessions, I think can be one of the most valuable things that you can do as a guitar player. Particularly if you've heeded my advice and found a goal. If you found a goal and you're like, this is what I want, this is where I want to go. Here are the things that I need to be able to get there. What are the exercises that are going to give me these things? And then you fill out a practice schedule that covers all of these different things. And you know inside yourself if you're one of those guys that can play loads of stuff, but you never learned the notes on the neck. Like you have to do that. If you want to progress beyond a certain level, you have to know the notes on the neck. Sorry, that's just how it is. You got to do it. So you know, rudimentary theory, what chords are in a key. There's some, a lot of people kind of skip over that. If, if, if you know that there are things missing for you, then whap those into that practice schedule uh, right away. Now, I've got a couple of other things to chat about, but I'm going to try and take a couple of questions as well. Uh, Vinny's on time management. We covered that um, from Deborah. There are so many songs to learn. How do we choose? Okay. So, I just touched on that a little bit with the repertoire and I've talked about it a few times now about finding the stuff that you love the most. Okay. That is really the most important thing here is finding things that ignite your fire that you can really put your enthusiasm and your energy into. That is the key thing. Now, uh, I recently did a, a video about uh, which should people start with strumming or finger picking? And the answer to that question, well, strumming is a bit easier, but finger picking sounds different. And if you love finger picking, you should start with that because you're going to be full of your energy and you're going to want to keep doing it. Whereas if you don't really love doing finger picking and you're trying to do it all, you know. That, so when it comes to trying to find a song, I would recommend finding the songs or choosing the songs that you really, really love. If you really, really love playing Steve Vai songs, but you're a beginner, you're probably going to have to find some other stuff that you love. And that goes back to that last, the first thing I talked about, which was the listening and trying to find new things to listen to. Because uh, if you try and go, if you try and learn songs that are far, far too hard, you, if you really enjoy it, then that's fine. You stay with it. But you have to accept that, hey, I'm trying to learn this really, really hard song. I might not be able to do that yet. You can't be disappointed by the fact that you can't do it because it's too hard. So you're going to have to do some training things to get there. But what you want to do is try and find things that you really enjoy to take you there. So within the same style, the same genre. Uh, again, these kind of community things like my forum community can be a really great place if you like. I really, really like I don't know, uh, Tommy Emmanuel songs, but all of his songs are really difficult. Where can I start if you don't know? The answer for that would be, you know, Chet Adkins or whatever, learning some of those easier Chet Adkins pieces to develop the skill set. But even then, they're still not super beginner easy, most of them. Um, so hopefully that, you know, find the stuff that you love. Um, okay, from Greg, you put a big emphasis on transcribing in later lesson plans. Are there songs you would recommend to start with for beginners? Yes. So again, if you go to the transcribing section of the website, justinguitar.com, uh, I've got a couple of courses 
I think there's a couple where I play the stuff that you can transcribe to help you on, but the ones that I found the most effective are the ones where I say, hey, let's all learn. Uh, when I come around by Green Day, it uses power chords. Uh, off you go. If you get stuck, then you can click the hint one button. And then I say the chords, uh, power chords, E, D, C, and G. Have another go and see if you can work it out. And then if you can't, then I tell you what the chords are, but still, and you should still work it out from there. And I think that that's a nice way of doing it because it means that you, in that first period of, of, of trying to go up the really steep cliff, you're going to use a lot of energy and you're going to learn a lot. You're going to get stronger. Your ear will get stronger and better by forcing yourself to try, even if you're not very successful. But then when if you get really stuck, it's like I can throw you a rope down and say, hey, these are the chords in the wrong order. And that'll pull you up a little bit, make it a bit easier. So I think that's a great way to get into transcribing if you're um, new to it is to find some way of, of helping. Um, okay, from Alexandra, Alexander, sorry. Uh, the sessions with Tammy were fantastic. After the lockdown, will you be going back to this type of session? Uh, yes, uh, I'm still in touch with Tammy. Uh, I think she's planning to rekindle the lessons when all of this lockdown uh, stuff finishes. We're not allowed to do have contact with anyone. I'm not sure where it is, how it is where you are, but in the UK, it's uh, uh, no meeting people except for outdoor exercise, one other person. So. Uh, don't really fancy running and trying to teach guitar at the same time. Um, but actually, I'm planning on expanding that area a little bit more as well. But I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when it's going to happen. But uh, yeah, there's some really fun uh, stuff coming up. OK, um, I don't have much time left. I've just been given a little we should wrap stuff up a little bit. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Hal Leonard for inviting me to do this. And a special big thank you to Jeff. Uh, who's been editing my new book that I'm releasing uh, for Hal Leonard, which is called, I think, The Easiest Guitar Songbook Ever. I should know the title of my book. Oh, there we go. Hey, thank you, Jake. Uh, the Easy Guitar Songbook. Um, and the idea of the songbook is that uh, the whole book has 101 songs, but they only use the eight beginner chords that you would do in grade one of my beginner guitar courses. So, uh, uh, C, G, A, E, D, A minor, E minor, and D minor. Just those eight chords all of the way through. Book has loads of tips on how to play it and all of the strumming patterns and all of that sort of stuff in it as well. So that's the plan for the book. I'm not exactly certain of the release date. I feel massively underprepared uh, right now. I really should have uh, looked that up before we started, but I have noticed it's actually already available on Amazon, so you might want to find it uh, there. So... Um, I think where you know I've, we've we've made it through a lot of time. I really hope that this has been uh, beneficial to you. Uh, I will stick about and try and answer a couple of questions in the chat after the stream has gone down. As long as the chat stays, I'm not 100% certain it would. Um, I've just looked up there. Uh, I think I probably don't have any time for questions, and I'm not sure if we're going to one more question. If I'll take it, Amy. Okay. Uh, is Amy going to throw me a question, or am I going to look at the screen? Uh, <clears throat> the, the only one I can see is there a, a version of you who plays flamenco. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This is like the stream's likely to cut out any second. I'm not exactly sure when, so uh, but I'll try. I don't know anyone like me that plays flamenco. I've attempted to play flamenco. I've, I've done most of a classical guitar degree. I love playing classical guitar, but I only do it as a hobby. I don't teach it. Um, I've attempted flamenco, but I am I find it incredibly difficult. And if uh, if I get gifted another lifetime as a human being, um, I think I'd like to be a flamenco guitar player because it's so beautifully passionate and powerful music. Uh, I really love it. Um, but yeah, not me, and I'm afraid I, I can't recommend anyone to do that. Um, so I'm not sure what else to talk about. Um, Okay, one, one last tip then that might get cut off. If I, if I do just disappear, if they cut my stream early, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Big thank you to Amy for keeping an eye on the comments and for Jake who's looking after all of the technical st stuff today. I really appreciate uh, your help. And again, yeah, thanks to Hal Leonard for the invite and um, uh, being my publisher. That's really awesome. Um, last tip for you, which is terrible for Nam, is spend more time practicing than looking at gear. Because I'm a gear hound too, and I must have wasted so many hours of my life looking at gear that I didn't buy or when I should have just bought a guitar that I loved and just spent most of my time practicing because practicing is what it's all about, not having a fancy guitar. 
So on that completely ridiculous note to say at the NAM Festival where I go every year and I just look at gear for a whole week, um, I'm going to say goodbye. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Have yourself a lovely rest of your NAM week. Do stay tuned. There's a great Steve Weiss seminar coming up, which I'll be watching as well. You might see me in the chat. So uh, take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there. And hopefully I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.